Okay, in this tutorial, we'll just take a look at another way to make objects kind of break apart. And I've showed this before in other tutorials with a uh, uh, tutorial on particle shards. You can find that in the particles playlist on my channel. And also, maybe you've seen the video under uh, Blender version 2.49 with reactor particles. I happen to like that the best in a lot of ways. That's a lot of fun. And in this case, this is using the self fracture add on. So we'll go through that just briefly. So I'm going to run the animation kind of give you an idea. I don't use this very often, but I thought I'd point it out. The reason being is that th this type of fracturing to me, even though it's pretty cool they break it up in all these polygonal shapes like this, it still feels fairly unnatural unless you have a really fast computer and you can break it into really, really, really small pieces. But when I see pieces that look like this, that's it feels unnatural to me, so I don't use it. And also, this is within blend to render I'm using alt a though I could press P and use it in the game engine and then it falls and breaks like that but then the performance is fairly slow all right so I'll just use it within blend to render just in case it's something you want to work with and it's easy to set up so let's just I'll just get rid of this all together and start with the new object I'll start with a cube maybe I'll scale it down a little bit Okay, so then from here, I'm going to subdivide it a little as well. Move it over in this light. All right, so I'm going to edit mode, WS, whoops, what I do there? <laughs> w, subdivide, okay, like that. And then uh, I have my toolbar up here with T. And what I want to get is these, well, actually my self-fracture add-on is actually loaded, but I'll show you how to get it. Basically add-ons, you come up here to file, come down here to user preferences, down here, you come over to this add-ons tab like this. Easiest way is just to type in cell like that, and it brings up this self-fracture. This box won't be checked like that, so you have to check it. You have to like, sometimes you have to click it twice. And then just having it checked like that, so that's all you need to do and then you close it and then you'll have this option available right here all right so let me go look at these other layers see what I have on this scene let me get rid of this on this layer because that's going to be important what else is on that layer let's see I'll get rid of that too all right so I'm back on layer one with this object selected there's lots of options and there's a lot of tutorials on doing this and since I don't focus on it I'm not going to go in depth but this just kind of give you an idea so you click cell fracture with it on here and you can you know change the number you know you can do levels that, this will be fractures of fractures like that and that's pretty much all you need to do for starters or we'll make it a little noisy give it some variation like this and we'll just start with that and then just say okay you can see it's working in the background. It's basically breaking up the object into a bunch of individual objects. That's what it's doing. But when you're done, this object's still sitting right there. But what it does, it puts it on the next layer, layer two. So you see all these objects in here like this. All right, so what I'll do is I'll come back here to layer one. I'll just move this out of the way for a second. And I'll come over here and press B and get all these guys and then I'm going to press M to move it to layer one and then directly I'll press one. I could click here but I can just press one. Yikes. M1. I moved my mouse accidentally. So there it's there on that layer and then I can just press one and activate layer one automatically like that. So there it is like this. You can see if I ta tab, it tabs this one but it's actually part of this here. And then if I press Alt A, let's see, oh, where's my cell fracture? Okay, let's press P. There it goes like that. Sometimes this thing, let me see. And there it breaks like that. All right, so Alt A should work. Sometimes, sometimes you have to move this off to another layer. Let's move this over to layer two. Like that. Let's see if Alt A works. No. You know what? I've had trouble with this before. Sometimes I'll put it on and it won't, if I have multiple objects or if I have been working with multiple objects, sometimes the second or third object 
won't break apart visibly if you use Alt A, but it works, of course, if you press P. And that's really how you want it to work, because otherwise, normally when you press Alt A, it just breaks apart right at the outset. But in our case, if you press P, we want it to break apart when it hits ground like that. So it's useful for certain things, and I'll be showing some other tutorials in the future on how I actually use uh, breaking things. I don't use this approach at all, but I like things that look a little more realistic to me, and I'll show you that in a future video. All right, and I'll see you then.